Uh, so Bigby Train, uh, the roots go back to 1990. Um, we, I moved down to Bournemouth from the Midlands um, uh, with a guy called Andy Poole. And um, uh, we, I was working in the local council and um, he came to talk to me on the first day because I'd put on my CV, you know, that I was a musician. Uh, and started asking me about what sort of music I liked. And I think he expected me to be saying, you know, whoever was current at the time, Duran Duran. But I started reading off some obscure progressive rock bands like Van de Graaff Generator and PFM, etc. Um, and, of course, he was uh, his listening was in a similar ballpark. So uh, he was also in a band called Arkshine, and we, we took it from there, really. A couple of years later, we formed, properly formed Bibby Train. And so when I was growing up, there were lots of railway memorabilia and toys and things. And we had a train set called Big Big Train. And um, my brother, Nigel, formed a band. He was looking for band names, and I suggested um, Big Big Train as a band name. He took that on. And then when I moved down to Bournemouth, that just kind of stuck with me in my, in my mind. And I, I, we literally threw names into a hat. And that was the only one that everybody seemed to agree on. Subsequently, I decided it was a terrible band name um, but uh, you, it, you we were stuck with it I mean are you got the, I mean the band's a mixture of um, people who have hard bitten touring monsters like you know Ricard and Nick who I mean you know Nick has he did even with Cirque he did like 1500 shows and then others in the band that have done a lot less touring and then people like me that have done almost none um, and yeah, I was, you know, I was shaking with nerves on that first night at uh, King's Place. The room was so warm that it, you know, it brings a smile to your face. Things do get bigger than we expect them to, and there's a demand, and you know, so we try to accommodate that. Um, in terms of the venues, I think we're just we're looking for venues that have got a connection with the band. There's 13 musicians on stage because we use a brass band, so it's an extremely complex logistical challenge for a for a, a medium-sized organisation. King's Place was selected um, with what was the right kind of size at that period and then Cadogan and we moved on and we, we made them uh, two sets of residences really because it kept our costs down a little bit and uh, obviously it does mean then the fans need to come to you. Fans of Cosmic Graph out there? There you go. There you go, Robin. <laughs> on your right and on my left, with amazing shirts and an amazing array of guitars, we're weathering the tour together, are we not? Dave Gregory! Yay! Yeah. On the opposite side of the stage, on my right and on your left, the lady that sang the um, nursery rhyme in Hedgerow for you tonight, on violin, electric violin actually, I mean, it's, got a, it's got an extra string, so she'd do the viola stuff and the violin parts as well, so you don't have to change things. On vocals, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Paul.
Behind me, on many, many keyboards, he's Weapon X. He's like, uh, you know, MOD sort of standard stuff. The one and only, Mr. Danny Manners. Moving on. I think he's taking on Dave in the loud shirt state. Now the guitar it says JRS. It's not an I, it's not Inland Revenue Service. It's John Ricard Cueblon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm over here. On bass guitar and on bass pedals, he's got the low end all sorted. Greg Spartan, folks! We've been touring around the UK, as you know, and um, NDB and I are travelling in a car together, and he's, my friend, he's, he's actually got a superpower. He's got the ability to be able to pack stuff, because he did a lot of time away on tour for Cirque du Soleil, so anything he can get, I'm sure he could get an entire symphony orchestra into the back of a Fiat 500. So it's incredible stuff. It is a gift. I said he ought to start his own YouTube channel. Hey, it's you, the packing guy, right? That kind of thing. He came up and he sang the foreign time with me, so, um, and he also does, you know, drums, sparks, his own things. The uh, legendary, actually, Andy V. Nick D. Virgilio. Thank you, David, for that fine introduction. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, Looking mighty fine in a suit and a waistcoat, I might add. On the flute and lead vocals, Mr. David Longton. Thank you. enough to get a ticket from somebody who unfortunately couldn't go went to King's Place on the Saturday night and just I, I was hooked from that moment on it was just such a brilliant brilliant experience hearing everything live it brought things to life for me I managed to go to two of the King's Place gigs uh, the Friday and Saturday night in fact if you listen to the the live recording from those um, I'm at the very beginning when David says you're very quiet, it's me who says, then make some noise. Oh, no, well, I started at King's Place, so first live concerts they ever did. I thought, well, I'm going over for this, no question. So I went to all three of those. Uh, I was totally hooked. Everybody thought I was a loony. Yeah. Definitely. I think, I think for me, uh, King's Place, the, the gigs there, we really went to one. We went to the Saturday, Saturday show there. And um, I think preceding that, because when they announced that they were going to play live, we thought, I mean, initially people thought we were going wow. And so the anticipation for that was amazing. And then actually being there on the night, um, you know, when, when sort of the lights go down, I think I spent most of the next two hours in, in tears, I think, because it was just, mm. the material was just, you know, stunning. And hearing it live in that, in that context was amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that for me was, was, was incredible. Funny you should say that. Everybody ready? Ready? Yeah! Right!
Cadogan Hall concerts were announced. Um, again, I just grabbed the opportunity and I didn't care. Although I was in Glasgow and it was in London, I, I booked a cheapo flight and I booked a cheapo hotel miles away from the venue because I'm from Yorkshire, so I'm, um, I'm tight. My live experience was at Cadogan Hall on the Friday night, uh, the, the first night, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a great, uh, great atmosphere. But what I got from that gig, again, was exactly what we're talking about now. Downstairs after the gig, the band come out, everybody doesn't rush to them or whatever, but they treat them as a friend and they'll have a few selfies or they'll get an album signed or whatever. Uh, so I got involved as soon as I got the tickets for, for Cudugan Hall, I went on and joined the Facebook page and then they did the Cudugan Capers, which was the sort of side Facebook page like they've done for these concerts as well. Uh, and it was through that that I, that I got to meet Glenn. Um, just virtually and he invited me along to the they had a big big breakfast on the morning of the of the Saturday show uh, and I went along to that and met up with him. Uh, it was Cadogan Hall. Um, my wife asked me the question how badly do you want to see Big Big Train which is one of the most ridiculous questions I've ever been asked in my life um, and so we we, um, we planned a holiday um, around those concerts that um and then and then we we, we all saw the the concerts together we saw them at Cadogan hall yeah which was um an amazing and very emotional concert for us that was kind of i think where we found out about the love of the passengers and all of that because we until that point we hadn't realized that that was all part of big big train but i think for me as far as live gigs are concerned, the big highlight was the Lorelei Festival in Germany last year because the guys were coming out of their comfort zone. They were going into something completely different. They're playing in front of an audience that wasn't exclusively big, big train fans. And the reception they got was just outstanding. It was, it, it was just an amazing evening of, of terrific music. And man, they had, they had the audience just eating out of the palm of their hand. It was, it was great. It was, it was such a terrific thing to be a part of. Last year we together saw them at the Lorelei Festival in Germany and they blew me away. It was a fantastic evening, an incredible mood, great music. In fact, when they announced that Big Big Train were playing Lorelei, I looked at the Lorelei website. Um, I was trying to book hotels and for some reason it's all in German and my German isn't that good so I contacted my friend Dieter, I said Dieter can you help me because the hotels are on two sides of the River Rhine and I want to be on the correct side. He said let me look at it, I'll come back to you and about 10 minutes later he said, came back to me and he said right I've bought a ticket and I'm buying a big motorhome. So that's how we ended up going to Lorelei. Well, my wife uh, said to me when, when I first asked her about uh, Big Big Train are playing in Germany and, and, and I, th I, th I think I might like to go. She, she said, there's no way in hell you were going to Germany without me. I think Lorelei was, was where we all kind of clicked as a, as a little, little bit of a group of friends. It's, you know, and, 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 we, yeah, and, and, and we, all, we all have quite a similar sense of humour and uh, it all seems to work rather well so far. It works very well. Yeah. So far. Yeah. But a lot of what we... Um, uh, did during that um, weekend socially probably led into what we're doing now oh, as well. Yes. All yes. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it gave us all a Definitely. bit of a you know a bit of a feel for each other's characters, yeah. and, we, and, we, and we knew we kind of enjoyed hanging out with each other. So it kind of led to this uh, yeah. this thing happening. Yeah. I think that's the thing, the show can be 
It's a prog rock show, but it doesn't all have to be doom and gloom and deep and meaningful. It, it can be joyful as well. And, you know, if you can spin on a dime but manage to take people with you, then, you know, we've, we've won. We hadn't seen a concert in Halifax before, but we were glad they were coming to Halifax yeah. because exactly that history yeah. that's apparent. And we know that, you know, obviously Big Big Train, their, their work is crafted from that history. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so it, it seemed to have a sense of purpose to be Absolutely. in an environment like this. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. ideal, yeah. as it was in Newcastle, as it was in Edinburgh, yeah. and as it will be on the rest of the journey. Because yeah, I think the venue made that difference. It gave, gave them more space yeah. for the brass, and it had such an... I wasn't expecting it to change the the sound of the brass that much, but it certainly yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what the venue does. This venue, because they all have their characters, they do, don't they? they do. And I think that's something, if the band can enjoy yeah. a venue because of what it gives, that's great for us. Yeah. I, I think the venues, and they always seem to play amazing venues, I mean, proper venues of character that just add to the whole occasion, don't it, they? It makes a difference. Isn't it interesting how they do tweak things a little bit as they go? You know, each yep. night they've, you know, they, they, they've little changed tweaking, little yeah. bits and pieces. Yeah. And in these little yes. Yeah. 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 the night before. Yeah. 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 Danny started standing up. Yeah. Rachel and uh, oh, Rachel interacting. Thing yeah. 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 How she's come on. It's like each night. It's unbelievable. Each yeah. night she kind of kind of just adds a little bit more to it. Yes. Yeah. And it's it's wonderful to watch. I, I, I think for me that the, the, the absolute highlight has been the night in Newcastle. When we arrived back at our hotel to find oh. the band, no, we're staying in the same hotel. And uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Spike booked yeah, the, book the hotel. He's, <laughs> he's going to take credit for that he's one. The man. Yeah. <laughs> As if you knew. <laughs> one, hit, one, one, one hit Spike. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. and, and, and being as gracious as they, they always are, they, mm. they, they kept us, uh, they, they said to us, you yeah, know, come and join us. And, uh, and we had a, a, a few drinks, a couple yeah. of beers, yeah. and a uh, couple of beverages were, were sacrificed. The journey for the band I'm very excited about. I love that they're getting around their home countries to spread the music. For me personally, I appreciate the fact that I can get and see them, get to go out and see them. Big Big Train are uh, probably the only band that I go and see live um, whenever I can that I'm just aware at some point in the show or several points there will be tears, tears from yeah. everybody. Yeah, look around. <laughs> you just Someone's look around and, and somebody's yeah. crying. Um, yeah. yeah, and, and that's, that's just a mark, isn't it, of how brilliant it is. I think, I think for me one of the things is because we're doing all six on the tour, it's great because we're seeing them in very different venues every night. We've got different seats, different views. Because although it's the same show, it's never the same if you get what I mean. There's yeah. subtleties yeah. every night yeah. and it's kind of what's what's the subtlety going to be for tonight and what am I going to, you know. You're going to get little, little variations, little yeah. nuances, things you didn't pick up the first time round. The crowd's different, the venue's different. Um, and so, yeah, it's just... Um, it's just looking forward to, you, you, you know what's coming, so you can relax a bit more and, yeah, yeah, and enjoy it. And enjoy, enjoy it, properly, it absolutely. Yeah. And, and Rob, Rob said they were faultless in Edinburgh, and they were, and yet they were better in Newcastle. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And that was the, I think that was the interaction with the band and the venue. But how's it going to start? You know, the first few bars of Alive came through, and oh, wow, it was, it was just, we were up in the balcony, and it was just... It was, it was, again, it was majestic, it just washed over you, and yeah. the next two hours just went like that. It was, yeah. uh, you know, it was incredible. I, I, yeah. For me, it was faultless. I mean, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, I agree. you know, I couldn't have, it couldn't have, couldn't be a better start. Oh, it was just a fantastic experience. So, yeah, it's another one for the memory bank.
having experienced King's Place, Cadogan Hall, etc., I, I think there's been an upward progression in terms of the band's performance. They will probably, I mean, this is the fifth concert of the tour, so I imagine they will have a, a greater degree of confidence in their performance. They've always been very slick, they've always been very professional in their performance anyway. The songs are just amazing. Um, I'm expecting to sit there for two hours or so of bliss. It kind of, it's like rocket fuel, you know, you go away and feel actually there's people here that we make a, maybe just a small difference, but a difference. And um, from a songwriter's perspective, and that's mainly what I am, that's very important to me that, you know, the songs that we write and perform you know, do make a difference to people's lives, or can do.